Welcome to Tokusatsu Film School, the only show on the net that gives you the knowledge and resources on creating your own original tokusatsu. Today on the show, we're going to talk about the basics of action. <laughs> Having a cool looking suit is nice, but not knowing how to move in the suit is one of the things that can either make or break your production. I'm lucky enough to be trained under Mr. Kamen Rider himself, Takai Seiji. But no matter where you learn action, the basic principles all should be the same. If you're a novice to all this, it's best to do this under some sort of supervision. Not only is this for your safety, but also so that someone can observe your movements and help you confirm if you're doing it or not. Especially if it's someone far more experienced than you. You'll also want to have a mirror to see your body movements and fix any places that need adjusting. And finally, make sure that you're warmed up and properly stretched by the time you start practicing your basics. You don't want to go pulling any hamstrings or, you know, just hurting yourself which we are not responsible for that by the way. Before we start, let me first explain why kicks should be worked on first. Kicks take far more time to develop and require a lot more coordination with the legs than punches do. So to even out the time it takes to train someone in action, it just makes more sense to train your kicks first and then your punches. Now don't get me wrong, the punches are just as important, but to even out your all-around action skill, we'll be focusing more on the kicks first until you're able to coordinate your body to kick properly. Today the lovely Megumi Takarai will be showing us some basic kicks. Look at her. Ain't she adorable? The first kick we'll be displaying is the front kick. From a basic fighting stance, in which your legs are roughly shoulder length apart, you'll be going through a sequence of motions before executing the actual kick. First, you want to reach out with your hand the opposite of your lead slash front hand as if you're reaching for a rope. While doing that, you want to rotate your hips respectively. This should automatically allow for your knees and feet to pivot accordingly. You then want to raise your rear knee to give you that extra bit of torque which will rotate your hips 90 degrees and then stick the rest of your leg out to execute the kick. I can't stress more the importance of the hips in any of these techniques. Whether it be punches, kicks, or blocks, it doesn't matter. The hips play an important part not only in the most erotic of K-pop idol group dances, but also in action as their use determines just how big your movements will look like for the camera. As you can see here, Megami is getting the most out of her kicks because she's fully rotating her hips. We can tell this by taking a look at her planted foot opposite of the kicking one. She's getting so much torque from her hips that her planted foot has to pivot even more during the kick to compensate. This is one of the ways in which you can confirm if you're doing your kicks properly or not. Always start your movement from the hips. Always. Next up is the roundhouse kick. The setup for this is pretty much the same as the front kick, but this time around, the kick is going to be covering an arc from one side to the other. At first you won't be able to know the differences until you see them or actually try these out yourself, but let's quickly go through them. The first major difference lies in how the torso is positioned, towards the opponent for the front kick and 45 to 90 degrees for the roundhouse. Secondly, the way that the foot and or toes are positioned determines what kind of kick you'll be doing. Vertical for front kicks and horizontal for roundhouses. There's also a variation of the roundhouse in reverse, but that's a little more advanced, so we'll save that for another day. Next up is the side kick. This kick is meant to launch your opponent flying back as if they're a Godzilla. For the front and roundhouse kicks, we used our rear leg to set up for the kick, but this time around you want to bring your lead leg back to your hip, and then extend your kick horizontally. We'll be talking about how to utilize these movements for the frame in a future video. All these kicks take a long time to get used to, so don't be lazy. Practice makes perfect. The earlier you start, the sooner you'll be able to get in condition for your shoots. That's it for this episode of Tokusatsu Film School. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. Also give it a nice thumbs up. And also subscribe to GPTV for more upcoming content. Tune in next time for more Tokusatsu Film School right here on Garage Pro TV.